Today, we're diving into the legendary discography of one of the greatest rock bands of all time, Led Zeppelin. We've ranked the top Led Zeppelin albums of all time, and trust me, it wasn't easy. These choices are based on a mix of critical acclaim, commercial success, and of course, our personal favorites. So, without further ado, let's kick off our list. Presence, 1976. Imagine this, it's 1975. Led Zeppelin is facing a tumultuous period in their history, with Robert Plant recovering from a serious car accident. But out of adversity comes Presence, the seventh studio album that would mark a pivotal moment in the band's journey. Released on March 31st, 1976, Presence soared to the top of both British and American album charts, securing a triple platinum certification in the US by the RIAA. Despite commercial success, critics were divided, making it the lowest selling Led Zeppelin album. Now, let's unravel the intriguing story behind Presence. Picture this, the band, unable to tour due to Plant's recovery, decides to channel their energy into the studio. In just a matter of weeks, guitarist and producer Jimmy Page pulls off some epic long shifts to bring this album to life. The result? An album brimming with hard rock dynamics and a raw simplicity that sets it apart from their other works. And where did the title Presence come from? It encapsulates the strong aura the band felt while working together during this challenging time. The album cover, a creation by Hypnosis, features captivating photographs centered around a mysterious black object known as The Object. Now, what makes Presence stand out? Well, it's dominated by compositions from the powerhouse duo Page and Plant. Unlike other Led Zeppelin albums, it steers clear of keyboards and leans lightly on acoustic guitar. With only two tracks, including the epic 10-minute opener, Achilles' Last Stand, performed live due to Plant's recovery, Presence became a unique chapter in Led Zeppelin's legacy. Fast forward to today, and Presence has undergone a renaissance in retrospective reviews. Its hard rock dynamics and embellished simplicity have earned it a special place in the hearts of fans who appreciate the raw essence of Led Zeppelin's music. In Through the Outdoor, 1979. In November and December of 1978, Led Zeppelin sets foot in ABBA's Polar Studios in Stockholm, Sweden, and within a lightning fast three weeks, they create the masterpiece we know today. Released by Swansong Records on August 22, 1979, In Through the Outdoor signaled a departure from the band's previous sound. Unlike their earlier albums, this one saw a musical shift with bassist and keyboardist John Paul Jones taking the reins. The result? A commercial triumph that soared to number one on the Billboard 200 in its second week on the American chart and also claimed the top spot in the UK, Canada, and New Zealand. But hold on, there's more to this story. The album's title isn't just a quirky choice, it's a reflection of the band's struggles post the tragic death of Robert Plant's son Carrick in 1977 and their stint in tax exile from the UK. Unable to tour on British soil for over two years, getting back into the public eye, felt like trying to get in through the out door. The recording sessions reveal a band in flux. Bassist and keyboardist John Paul Jones, along with vocalist Robert Plant, took the lead, while drummer John Bonham and guitarist Jimmy Page faced personal battles. Bonham with alcoholism and Page with heroin addiction. Jones, armed with a Yamaha GX1 synthesizer, collaborated closely with Plant, a departure from their usual dynamic. Despite the internal struggles, or perhaps because of them, In Through the Outdoor boasts a unique blend of musical influences and a fresh perspective. It stands as a testament to Led Zeppelin's ability to adapt and innovate even in the face of adversity. Now, as we revisit this pivotal chapter in Led Zeppelin's history, we invite you to share your thoughts in the comments below. What's your take on In Through the Outdoor? Houses of the Holy, 1973, released on March 28, 1973 by Atlantic Records, this album represents a pivotal moment in the band's evolution, showcasing their musical prowess and innovation. What sets Houses of the Holy apart? Well, two band members inspired by the creative winds of change installed studios at home. This allowed Led Zeppelin to craft more sophisticated songs, experiment with arrangements, and push the boundaries of their musical style. The result? An album that transcends the traditional 
traditional rock landscape. This masterpiece features timeless tracks that became staples in the group's live performances, from the anthematic The Song Remains the Same to the ethereal The Rain Song and the mesmerizing No Quarter. Houses of the Holy solidified its place in the Led Zeppelin legacy. Yet not all tales from the recording sessions made it onto this album. The title track, among others, found its home on subsequent releases like Physical Graffiti and Coda. Led Zeppelin's magic lay in the hands of Robert Plant, Jimmy Page, John Paul Jones, and John Bonham, who provided Al instruments and vocals, creating a seamless musical tapestry. Produced by Jimmy Page and mixed by the legendary Eddie Kramer, Houses of the Holy marked a turning point for the band. The album cover, a visual feast designed by Hypgenosis, captured the band's essence and was based on a photograph taken at Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland. Physical Graffiti, 1975. Unleashed on February 24th, 1975 as their sixth studio album, it marked a monumental shift for the band as it became their first release under the banner of their newly minted label, Swan Song Records. In early 1974, the band holed up at Headley Grange, a picturesque country house in Hampshire. It was here that the magic unfolded, resulting in eight new tracks that showcased the band's trademark improvisation and experimentation with recording techniques. Recognizing the abundance of creativity, they decided to sprinkle in some unreleased gems from the sessions of their earlier albums, adding an extra layer to this musical feast. Spanning hard rock, progressive rock, rock and roll, and folk, physical graffiti emerged as a genre-defying masterpiece. The album cover of Peter Coriston-designed Die Cut Marvel proved to be a logistical challenge causing a delay in its release, yet the wait was worth it. Led Zeppelin 3, 1970. The recording process for this album was as diverse as the album itself. Led Zeppelin 3 saw the emergence of John Paul Jones as a multi-instrumentalist virtuoso, expanding the band's sonic palette with a plethora of keyboard and stringed instruments. Synthesizers, mandolins, double bass, you name it, Jones played it. Jimmy Page resumed his role as producer, shaping the album's sound alongside mixing maestros Andy Johns and Terry Manning. This musical venture wasn't just a sequel, it was a transformation. Led Zeppelin III steered away from straightforward rock, venturing into folk and acoustic realms. The iconic Immigrant Song retained hard rock influences, while tracks like Gal O's Pole and That's the Way revealed a softer, introspective side of Led Zeppelin. A testament to the band's creativity, two reinterpretations found their way into the album. Gal O's Pole, inspired by a traditional English folk song, and Hats off to Roy Harper, a blues reworking paying homage to Bucka White. The acoustic material sprouted from a songwriting session at Bronyer Orr Cottage in Wales, leaving an indelible mark on the album's musical direction. But the journey didn't end with the music. The album's intricate inner sleeve design, featuring a Volvel E with numerous images visible through holes in the outer cover, added another layer to the experience. Despite initial confusion among critics over the musical shift, Led Zeppelin III became an immediate commercial triumph, conquering both UK and US charts. Led Zeppelin II, 1969, released on October 22, 1969 in the US, and on October 31, 1969, this album is often hailed as the band's heaviest, featuring six original tracks and three mind-blowing reinterpretations of Chicago blues classics by legends like Willie Dixon and Howlin' Wolf. And let's not forget the anthem that needs no introduction, Whole Lotta Love, a single that soared to top 10 status in over a dozen markets worldwide. Led Zeppelin II wasn't just a musical triumph, it was a commercial powerhouse, becoming the band's first album to claim the number one spot on both UK and US charts. The album's cover, designed by the talented David Juniper, even earned a Grammy nomination for Best Recording Package in 1970. Fast forward to 1999, and the Recording Industry Association of America certified the album a whopping 12 times platinum for surpassing 12 million copies in sales. Talk about leaving a mark. Over the years, countless writers and music critics have sung praises for Led Zeppelin II, hailing it as one of the greatest and most influential albums of all time. Led Zeppelin IV, 1971. 
dropping on November 8, 1971, courtesy of Atlantic Records, this iconic album was the brainchild of guitar virtuoso Jimmy Page. Recorded between December 1970 and February 1971, the magic mostly happened in the rustic setting of Headley Grange, a country house that provided the perfect backdrop for the band's creative exploration. Now, let's talk about the crown jewel of this album, the eight-minute opus that needs no introduction, Stairway to Heaven. This track alone has etched itself into the annals of rock history. Embracing an informal recording environment, Led Zeppelin IV became a breeding ground for experimentation. The band, spurred by lukewarm reviews of their previous album, Led Zeppelin III took a bold step by leaving their fourth album untitled. Instead, it became known by four symbols, one chosen by each band member, with no name or details on the cover. Talk about making a statement. Breaking from tradition, the band brought in guest musicians, with vocalist Sandy Denny lending her talents to the Battle of Everything. Evermore, and pianist Ian Stewart joining the fray on Rock and Roll. The result? A diverse collection of songs with a hard rock reinterpretation of Memphis Minnie's blues classic, When the Levee Breaks. This album wasn't just a hit, it was a phenomenon. Led Zeppelin IV stands tall as the band's best-selling record, shipping over 37 million copies worldwide. It's a heavyweight in the US, and a global chart topper earning its place on lists of the greatest albums of all time. And here's a fun fact for you postage enthusiasts. In 2010, Led Zeppelin IV made history as one of 10 classic album covers featured on a UK postage stamp by the Royal Mail. Now, that's what you call leaving a lasting impression. Led Zeppelin, 1969, where it all began, the birthplace of the legendary Led Zeppelin sound. The band, freshly formed, dives into recording, blending original material from their early rehearsals with revamped blues and folk tunes. Produced by Page himself, the lineup boasts Robert Plant on lead vocals and harmonica, John Paul Jones on bass and keyboards, and John Bonham on drums. Percussionist Viram Jasani even makes a guest appearance on one track. Glyn Johns, Page's childhood friend, takes care of the mixing while the iconic album cover featuring the Hindenburg disaster is credited to George Hardy. Led Zeppelin first is the epitome of blues-infused rock and their take on the emerging hard rock scene struck gold. A commercial success in both the UK and the US, it soared into the top 10 on album charts. Now. Here's the twist. The songs were longer and not exactly radio-friendly for singles. Yet, due to exposure on album-oriented rock, radio stations, and the band's surging popularity, many of these tracks have become timeless classics on rock radio playlists. So, whether you're a die-hard Zeppelin fan or just diving into the roots of rock, so, whether you're a die-hard Zeppelin fan or just diving into the roots of rock, Led Zeppelin is where the magic all began and deserves the number one spot.